All right, well, perhaps we will get started here. So first of all, I'd like to say welcome uh, to those of you who've joined us today for this webinar presentation on the Master of International Business program uh, here at the Smith School of Business. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing uh, a little bit about the program with you, uh, its structure, some of the opportunities available, as well as some next steps on how you might go about um, interacting and, and expressing your interest in the program moving forward. Um, we will be recording today's session, and certainly we welcome any questions that you might have uh, that perhaps we don't get covered. Please feel, to, feel free to submit those through the Q&A button, which should be on your screen, and we'll definitely uh, find some time to, to address those. So my name is Carrie Regan. I am the program director for the MIB program here at Smith. I've held this role now for just over five years. And, uh, you know, it's a program that I think is in particular, one of our most unique offerings here at the school. We have quite a large portfolio of programs. Uh, MIB, I think just by the very nature of the opportunities and the amount of choice it provides our students is incredibly unique. It's a program built on partnerships and students can not only leverage those to study here in Kingston at the, on the Queens campus, but also at a business school partner around the world, which we will get to uh, in just a moment. So here's essentially the roadmap that we're going to follow for today's conversation. I'm going to, going to talk about some key features from the program, why you might choose to do a Master of International Business degree, um, what is it that we feel makes Smith unique in our delivery of programs like this. We'll talk specifically about the program structure, some of the things you can expect from a career management perspective, and then round out our conversation today talking about our admission requirements. And as I noted, definitely want to hear from you if you had questions that we don't cover um, in the course of the presentation. So please, uh, please send those along. So our mission here at Smith is to develop outstanding leaders, which is probably not that different than most business schools. But what I do think is unique is the way that we emphasize global perspective uh, in addition to some of those core leadership and business skills. It's really important to us as demonstrated by just the really sophisticated infrastructure and the number and caliber of our business school partners around the world, that this is something that we feel is very important and has have made investments to make sure that those opportunities are available to as many students as possible. In our undergraduate program here at the school, close to 90% of our undergrads do an exchange between their third and fourth year. And that's completely as a volunteer, as a voluntary um, initiative, so it's not a requirement. And it's on the back of the, the, that incredible infrastructure that we really were able to design and develop and hone the Master of International Business program, which is now uh, heading into its 16th year. So we feel that in, in order for our students to really have impact, they need to have that global perspective that comes with engaging in, in international activities. Uh, so we'll talk about what that looks like and how we accomplish that through a program like MIB. So this is an incredible, um, incredibly unique experience where students really do get an incomparable amount of international experience both here in the classroom as well as while they're abroad. And that just speaks to the global makeup of our classroom, the very specific focus on understanding how business systems intersect and interact on the global stage, how, we're, how all of the initiatives in a global world are interconnected and making a change here can have big implications for something over here. And giving our students an opportunity to be put in the, the decision maker seat through case learning that really enables them to, to apply um, that learning. Because of the uniqueness of the degree, we feel that graduates from this program have an incredible opportunity to differentiate themselves in a very competitive market. Great stories, great learning, great growth, um, and great perspective. Uh, having you know gone through a program like this where you're continually being challenged to think about the way that maybe you make assumptions, what biases you might have, and how that might impact your ability to navigate the you know, business decisions that you need to make. 
The program is designed to build on an undergraduate foundation in business. So all of our students have done a business degree or at the very minimum, a business minor. So unlike an MBA where you kind of have to start at the beginning and go back <clears throat> and do finance and accounting and marketing and economics and build all that foundational knowledge, the MIB curriculum is really designed to, to sort of be that what happens next? What are the conversations that happen? What, are this, what is the learning that happens once you've built that really solid business foundation? So our students don't go back and do some of those introductory courses. It's more strategic, it's more applied, it's more practical. We focus quite heavily on a team-based environment, meaning that we put a lot of emphasis on working collaboratively. And in this context, certainly working collaboratively with a diverse group. Um, most of our teams have students re student representation from at least four countries and often five or six. And we do a lot of investment around giving you the tools and the skills that we think are necessary to help you navigate that successfully. So it's a big part of the experience. And I can tell you having worked with programs that operate in a similar manner over many years here at the school. Even students who have challenging team experiences will speak about how much they learned over the course of that experience. So still very important. And then a host of experiential learning activities. So our students do capstone projects working with live companies. They do, of course, an immersive exchange experience um, either in the form of uh, a semester long in the single degree or a year long, um, perhaps in the double degree. <clears throat> and I think that that speaks to just the school's commitment to really enable students to learn by doing um, and having that opportunity to reflect on how that experience impacted them. So experiential activities are definitely very much a part of the experience overall. As I think um, maybe I've noted, the program is really built around the ability and the opportunity to immerse yourself, not only here in Kingston for a period of time, but also leveraging the school's international network of business school partners globally to do an exchange. And why do we feel this is so necessary? Well, we know that there are definitely core skills that students develop as they navigate this. So everything from really understanding yourself um, I think people make an assumption when they go abroad, maybe for the first time or go abroad to live for the first time, they think about all the things they're going to learn about the new culture that they're going to. Um, what I've certainly taken from the times that I've had to travel is what I've learned about myself and the opportunities I've had for that self-reflection as I navigate some of those new challenges and experience. So that's an incredibly powerful way to grow and to understand what you're capable of. I think that um, navigating a new environment requires you to be solution-driven and the leadership skills that come along with that. Learning how to communicate for results across a wide spectrum of people. Um, and some of those core skills that you can navigate or that you can leverage then long into your career. Certainly your cultural intelligence, your ability to understand the level of adaptation, the level of flexibility required given the cultural context in which you're operating. There's certainly no better way to build some of that, those skills than by actually experiencing it. <laughs> And then managing ambiguity. Um, of course, we are coming out, hopefully uh, coming out of a pandemic. And the reality is that the global market and the global environment is still complex. It has been incredibly disrupted. There's still you know, lots of big challenges that we need to filter through and, and, and address. And so there's a level of ambiguity that exists for a lot of people as they're navigating some of that. And you need to be able to make decisions with sometimes imperfect information. You need to be able to demonstrate resilience under pressure and you know, navigate some things that aren't as clear maybe as they could be. And so I think, again, you can see how those skills can be really relevant as you navigate you know, your postmaster's world and being able to have stories that speak to each of these skills and how you've developed and honed them is just such a, a powerful tool that we've seen students really been able to, to leverage after the program. 
So in terms of the, the pedagogical approach in the classroom, um, we take a very, um, I think, diverse set uh, or diverse approach. And really the pedagogical approach is specific to the faculty member, but also the material. So we may have some courses that are very hands-on where you really spend very little time listening to a lecture. We have some that perhaps are a nice blend of some lecture where you're understanding basic frameworks and fundamentals, but then you're going right into application through the use of cases, um, simulations, and teamwork. So it's this really nice blend and, you know, students are expected to be engaged regardless of what the approach is. So a lot of our alumni speak to what they learned actually from their peers, um, in addition to obviously great faculty, but in some cases, faculty are simply facilitating a discussion in the classroom amongst a group of really worldly, worldly people who have great perspective to share. And that is, I think, some of the, the juiciest and the most um, talked about aspect of what students take from this experience and uh, is a very rewarding for both our faculty and the students. So we call this sort of packaging and approach to management education here at Smith, the Smith Edge. And it really is the way that as a faculty and as a school, we have decided to um, focus on a few key things that <clears throat> we know are going to help differentiate our graduates. In the context of MIB, certainly understanding human dynamics and understanding how people uh, from different places of the world and different experiences navigate business problems. Lots of opportunity to provide students with uh, experiences that help them build self-awareness and resilience. And then certainly the experience and exploration that comes through things like immersive exchange and um, connecting directly with industry, um, you know, and having an opportunity to apply those skills on a daily basis through, uh, again, a very heavily case-based approach. So when students talk about what makes them different than students from other business schools or other programs, they can point to these elements to say, you know, these are some of the skills and things that I've honed during my time in the program that I now can, can bring to your indus, uh, industry or, or company as it may be. So the program structure is by design um, geared to enable students a fair amount of choice. So the choice comes, first of all, in deciding how long you would like to be a student. So we have one, one and a half and two year options. Each of those have different um, pathways, different academic pathways to completion. So um, we have double degrees that are both 16 and 24 months in length. Some of those double degrees send students abroad for year one and, and come to Queens in year two. Some of them have you do year one here at Queens and then go abroad for year two. And that's really specific to the design of each unique degree. For students who um, are in either track, they can also choose to do a semester abroad. All students have to have an immersive ex uh, international experience. But again, there's layers of flexibility in that where you could go abroad for an entire semester, or you could potentially choose to do something a bit more short term and complete more courses here at, at Smith. So we have a great academic advisor that works with all of our students to help them navigate just this incredible amount of choice. But it does really, again, help students curate a pathway through their masters that's very personalized and very specific to their goals. You do a series of core and elective courses. So again, the choice comes in at another level where you know, there are some fundamentals that we think are core to earning a master of international business, but then students can choose beyond that core for the remainder of their degree to, to really personalize the experience in an area that meets their professional goals. Um, and so that could be in marketing, it could be in finance, it could be in operations. Um, and that combined with the core learning can just make for a very powerful understanding and direct set of sense of direction as you navigate then the post uh, master's world. So as I've noted, um, this is a program that is really built on global partnerships. 
We are very proud of the schools that we have partnered with. Many of them we have been exchanging students with for many years. Um, and the number of sort of combined alumni we have is, you know, in the hundreds of students over the years. So you really do tap into a network of students who've had the opportunity to have this global experiences. Our partners uh, include schools in 39 countries, I think. Um, and I think we're close to about 125 or 130 different schools in on five continents across the globe. So you, the amount of reach that you have is quite extensive. As I mentioned earlier, students have the choice between earning what we call a single degree, which is a standalone degree from Queens, or opting into a double degree, where in addition to the Queens degree, you're spending a second year abroad, either before or after your time at Queens, and earning a second master's, often in an area of specialization. So this is for students who know they want to spend perhaps more time abroad than just a semester. They really want to develop a specialization. Potentially, they want to tap into a research-based degree in addition to the very applied and practical focus that we have here at Smith. There are lots of reasons why students would choose this. Uh, and we probably have about half of our class in a double degree every year and half in a single degree. So it really needs to come down to what are your goals? What kind of experience do you have? What kind of time do you want to invest? All of those sorts of questions. But we have a great team in our recruiting and admissions and in the program team that can help students navigate some of those bigger questions. So we have 10 double degree options. As you can see, a large concentration of them are in Europe. And that really speaks to, I think, the genesis of the master in management overall and the concentration of those programs across Europe. And so um, students can choose you know, from a host of different schools, all offering something quite unique and something specific. Um, we have one school, of course, outside Europe, which was in Australia, and uh, are currently navigating, you know, a couple of other options. I don't know that we'll ever have the same number of doubles as we do exchange partners, because I think we have close to 45 to 50 different exchange options. And then a, a smaller subset of that list is available for double degree. What you should take from this slide is that, as I noted, the different levels of specialization on each uh, at each school is unique. And so um, if for students who perhaps are very keen to explore a career in marketing, they may be drawn to the degree at Bocconi University in Milan, Italy, or the MSc in marketing at Asade Business School in Spain. Some students may want to leave the door open and sort of get a sense a little later on. And so they may be drawn to perhaps the MSc in management at the University of Mannheim or the master in management at ESSEC Business School, where they maybe don't have to make those decisions right away, but they then have an opportunity to choose from a host of different specializations, be it finance, marketing, um, operations, supply chain, et cetera. The other decision that students need to make, as I noted in the double is, are you interested in doing a course-based master's similar to what we offer here at Queen's? Or do you wanna complement what we have here at Queen's with a more research intensive experience? Um, I can tell you that I think that those two skill sets are incredibly powerful and honing skills in both of those areas really make for very well-rounded graduates that are sought after by industry. So in terms of, you know, maybe you haven't had a lot of research or academic writing experience, you know, doing it in the context of having this support system to help you navigate um, can, can be a, an interesting thing to explore if perhaps the double is something you're interested in. In terms of career management, and I, I know there's a question in the Q&A about job opportunities um, for the single degree. I, I can tell you that our employment numbers for the single and double degree students are relatively consistent and typically well north of 90% within six months of graduation. So feel very confident that saying uh, doing a double over a single doesn't necessarily dictate whether or not you're gonna get a job. It may have some implication on the type of job or whether or not the job is overseas versus in Canada, et cetera. 
everyone has access to our career management framework. And this has been designed very specifically by our career education and coaching group to meet students where they are. Where they are. We have some students that come into MIB knowing very specifically what they wanna do afterward. They wanna be working consulting, they have three or four firms that they're really keen to explore. And so they come in and essentially jump right into the latter part of that build and launch phase where they, you know, they're honing their resume, they're meeting with a career coach to talk specifically about interview strategy and all of those sorts of things. But we also have a large number of students who come in still trying to figure out exactly what it is they want to do post-grad. And so we have a different set of activities that are designed to support them. Some of them are more exploratory in nature, so doing self-assessments, leveraging a number of online resources, and, ta and tapping into the coaching teams for different things than maybe what someone would do at the launch phase. So really, <clears throat> You know, a one-year master's goes by very quickly. So my best piece of advice is give some thought, have some conversations with people in your life that um, can maybe start to help you refine some of those things so that you can take the best advantage of the resources that are here for you. But if you're still in that bit of exploratory um, phase, that's okay too. And we definitely have resources that can help you with that. At the end of the day, our focus is on enabling students to get the skills, have the experiences and the growth and develop that they need to take that next step phase, next step in their career. But in addition to that, we also have a very strong desire to help create a positive impact, a sense of community and an incredible student experience while they're here. So things like hosting cultural nights and getting together for holidays and celebrating things like Halloween and different um, cultural events from around the world is really important. Um, we have this sort of work hard, play hard mentality where at the end of the day, we're all here to support each other. And so in order to learn how to really trust each other, to make that support happen, we need to spend some time in community. And so we have a host of events that are designed to do that. Some of them, as you'll note, are more uh, fun perhaps or geared towards just celebrating each other. And some uh, are more professional, gearing up for presentations, doing case competitions, uh, guest speakers, industry nights, all of those things. So there's really um, very little opportunity to sort of not engage <laughs> and we try to be as diverse as possible with the types of events and things that we do and uh, and really encourage students to step outside their comfort zone and really take advantage of all the resources that are here. So um, in addition to sort of very personalized pathways and giving students choice as they navigate through the degree, we surround you with a host of different supports. So everything from coaching and advising on academics, health and wellness, careers, um, exchange, uh, and again, that incredible infrastructure that enables you to navigate that process and um, <clears throat> you know, figure your way through it is really important. Our career development program and a customized career ed education plan for each student where you get individualized coaching with coaches who are working specifically in the industries you're interested in um, and many ways for you to get involved and enhance your experience, be it through student executive leadership, certificate in social impact, student clubs, um, intramurals. So regardless of what your um, flavor is, I guess, or things you're interested in, you can absolutely navigate um, and find something I think that's going to align with your interests. So it is a residentially based program. And as such, we kind of really surround our students with, you know, lots of different options. We are a very resource uh, wealthy, I guess, school in the sense of, you know, uh, most students live in and around campus. And so there's just a lot of great infrastructure that you can tap into. Okay, so I see there's maybe a couple of questions about um, <clears throat> admissions. So I do wanna spend a little bit of time before we wrap up today talking about what that looks like. So we do what we call a rolling admission pro admissions process, which means we don't technically have hard deadlines um, with the exception of three of our double degrees. 
So the three doubles, uh, and this can be identified on our website, that um, where students will start um, the program abroad and then come to Queens in year two, have very hard deadlines in the spring. And that's because we need to then inform the partner that you're going to be starting there. And so we need uh, obviously a big runway to do that. Other than that, we do rolling admission starting in September, running right through until about July. So as the speed spots are available in the program, we'll continue to admit qualified applicants. So what is it that we're looking for? Well, at the very core, MIB is designed for students to do in the early phases of their career. So the average age in the program is 23. The average work experience is about 18 months. So if you are someone who has three or more years experience, MIB is probably not the right fit for you. Um, and not because you wouldn't be a valuable addition to the program, but largely because you want to make sure that what you're bringing into the program, you are also extracting a similar amount of value. And so it's probably better to be in a program where people have similar levels of experience, um, such that, you know, the material and the examples that you're um, leveraging are relevant to a broad range. So if you're someone who has 10 or 15 years, we have a host of other great programs here at the school, like MBA, like um, Master's in Management Analytics, Master in Finance, Master's in um, Entrepreneurship and Innovation that may uh, perhaps align better with your long-term goals. Beyond that, <clears throat> we really do take a bit of a holistic approach to admissions. So obviously, as I noted, the program is designed to build on an undergraduate foundation in business. So students who have a business degree um, and about a G, a B, sorry, a B plus average in the final two years of that business degree are eligible um, for the program. Um, typically, students who have that B plus average in their final two years are not required to write a GMAT. Um, if you are underneath that, or if you don't have a business degree, but you have a set of um, foundational courses in finance, accounting, marketing, and microeconomics, with a GMAT, you will also be considered. Obviously, we need core language skills, the main uh, medium of instruction, both here in Kingston, but also abroad at our partners is English. So you have to have a minimum level of English, um, which can either be demonstrated through a TOEFL or IELTS exam, or if you've studied in English, even if English is not your mother tongue, if you've studied in English for your undergraduate degree for you know, four years, then certainly we can talk about waiving that as well. References, uh, we typically ask for one at least to be academic. Uh, and again, given that most of our students are coming directly from undergrad, that's usually never that much of an issue. If for some reason there's been somewhat disconnect between you and your undergraduate institution, um, you know, there is some negotiation room on that. And, uh, and then beyond that, we ask students to complete a video essay as well as um, a personal statement that really helps us understand your interest, where your interest and motivations come for the program. You know, there are, there are lots of challenges in a program like this. And so it's really important that we make sure that students um, want the program for the right reasons. And that things like the challenges of navigating an international exchange or moving abroad perhaps if you've just moved to Kingston three months earlier, are gonna be things you're gonna be able to manage and handle. And I think if we understand what your core motivation is and that that's one of the things that draws you to the program, you, you know, it, you have a much more likelihood of, of getting an offer. I would say in addition to some of these core elements of, you know, the checking the, the boxes of, of a full admissions package, we are looking for students who are also keen to work in a team who have demonstrated a level of integrity and you know, leadership potential through some of the things that they've been involved in. <clears throat> um, you know, that they treat members of this community with respect. I think that um, you know, we, we have lots of different platforms and, and processes by which we engage with our candidates and it's somewhat of a personalized experience. So every candidate that applies to the program works with our application advisor in a one-on-one -on -one basis. And that application advisor is sort of your lifeline into the application world and they can help you curate and craft an application. So they're there to support you. 
um, and, you know, give you advice and guidance. And my best advice to you would be to listen to what they have to say um, as you're doing that. Um, okay, great question here. For someone coming from more of an arts degree with little to no business experience, does the Smith GDV provide the foundations for this program? And the answer to that is yes. So we do have a graduate diploma in business that students from non-business backgrounds can take. That program provides access to then laddering into another degree like the MIB. We actually have two students who've done the GDB that are now in MIB this year. And we have a long history of, of students who follow that path. Because it is eight graduate level courses, it does give you the foundational knowledge that you need to then succeed in MIB. And provided you have um, performed well enough in the GDB program, it's very rare that we would also then ask for a GMAT. Whereas students who only have the foundational courses at the undergraduate level would need a GMAT to progress through. So GDB is definitely a, an option in terms of laddering in. You, it also ladders into our full-time MBA program. So the GDB is a great, great gateway option for students who perhaps don't have a lot of foundational business training and are looking to maybe transition from arts, engineering, sciences um, more into a business um, direction. Okay, <clears throat> so, um, you know, if the MIB program is something that you are keen to explore, um, you wanna learn more, you want have questions specific to your own profile, and whether or not this is a right fit for you, whether a double degree is an option for you. My best recommendation would be to submit a resume and a copy of your unofficial transcript. And you can do that um, through a number of different ways. The application form on our website, there's an introduce yourself button. Um, you will receive an email from our admissions and recruiting team with a link to the recording from today. That can also trigger a way for you to submit those documents. Once we're in receipt of those, we do what we call a preliminary assessment, which is essentially a review of those documents to say, you know, yes, we, we think that, you know, we would encourage you to move forward or, you know, we need a GMAT or you're missing a marketing course or what have you. So it's sort of a, um, without having to go through the entire application and engage your references, et cetera, to really kind of test the water, so to speak, and determine whether or not this might be a good fit for you. One of the great things here at Smith is that we do have this wonderful portfolio of programs and specialized masters, MBA programs, whereby not being the right fit uh, for one program doesn't necessarily mean you're not a good fit for Smith. And again, our application and recruiting teams do a great job at helping funnel candidates to make sure that they're actually getting to the place where they need to be to achieve their overall goals. So definitely encourage you to, uh, to reach out. Okay, so we've had some great questions that have come in uh, while we've been chatting, but I definitely wanna take some time to make sure I answer any outstanding questions that you might have about the program. Um, and one of the questions that's come in is if there's no work experience, is this uh, okay for this course? And the answer to that is yes. So unlike the MBA where at a minimum we require two years of full-time experience, the, um, the Master of International Business was designed to for students at what we call the early career phase. So these are students who are new graduates or potentially recent graduates who um, want to do a master's at an earlier start in their phase in their career. They also want to perhaps layer in that international experience, which we know is much easier to do at certain parts of your life, <clears throat> you know, prior to perhaps marriage and children and you know, all of the things that come as we navigate life, we have a window of time perhaps where we, you know, living abroad and exploring those opportunities. And so that's part of the reason why the program is designed for you to do at an earlier stage in your career, because it can really help lay the foundation and actually set direction for what you're going to do uh, as you navigate, um, you know, the next phases of your career and wanting to get out there and build those, that international insight and knowledge um, early on. Okay, so I'm hoping I have 
answered the questions that you've submitted um, and giving you hopefully some good insight into who we are, um, who are the candidates that choose MIB. Definitely encourage you to visit our website. Um, we've just done a rehaul of that and there are a bunch of student stories on there that I think really bring to life the experience and also shed some light into who the students are that choose this program. There's also some great um, testimonials on there. And if you read through those, particularly the person who asked about the work component and what opportunities are available, I think if you read through that, you'll see that our students are working across a variety of different industries in a bunch of different functional areas. So you don't necessarily, there's a large slant, I think, towards consulting. Um, but we have students who are working in finance, who are working in tech, who are working in healthcare and education. We have students who are working here in Canada. We have students who are working abroad in Europe and Asia, um, Latin America. So, you know, the, we just actually um, had the Financial Times ranking. We were, again, for the third year in a row, ranked as the number one master in management program in Canada. But what was also really interesting was that we were in the top 20 in the world for international work mobility. So it is a program that really does open a lot of doors if you want to lean into that um, process. Yeah, so there's a question. I'm in my last year of my Bachelor of Commerce and I don't have any work experience. So this could very well be a great option for you. Um, again, because we're not asking for work experience, it's not an admission requirement. We do have some students, as I noted, who have maybe a year, maybe 18 months of professional experience. Um, and so we don't turn those students away, but we obviously have the conversation about, you know, is this the right fit? Um, there's no doubt that the program does have a, a quite a large financial investment, both in terms of the tuition, but also supporting yourself while you're traveling. And so some students really need to spend that time working after their undergrad to build up some savings to enable them to really focus on the academics and not have to say work while they're studying. So it's not unusual for us to have students with a year, 18 months of work experience, but I guess I noted it's not a um, it's not a requirement for admission. Um, yes. So the next question is, can I apply now? And yes, ab absolutely. Applications um, and admissions are open for the class of 2024, which will start in September of 2023. Um, certainly, if you're interested in a double degree. Early application is advised because we only have so many spots at each of those schools. Um, the single degree uh, is it's still important, particularly if you're applying from outside Canada, to give yourself a long runway to support visa application and all of that. Um, so yes, we are actively recruiting now for the next class, and uh, you can do that by engaging in any of our channels that are advertised here on this slide. Um, yeah, if you have submitted a document and you haven't heard back yet, we are starting to really see a ramp up in terms of numbers. So all I could ask is that you just be patient with us. Um, I guarantee someone will be getting back to you. We have a, we have a very dedicated team and their response time is usually very quickly, very quick. Um, but as I said, all of our programs there are starting to ramp up in terms of volume. So um, some of those uh, response times may be slightly affected, but I feel very confident that you should hear something. Um, and as I noted, you will receive a follow-up from your attendance in today's session. And so certainly feel free to use that to, to re-engage with us as well. Yeah, so there's a great question here. What's the difference between the master in management and the MBA? And we get this question a lot. I think it's a very valid one. I think that MBA, uh, the MBA is designed for you to do at a specific time in your career, as is the master in management. At least in our context, our MBA requires a minimum of two years professional experience, but most students have three, four or five years. Um, and that's simply because you want to make sure you're doing it at a time where you're looking either to make a career pivot or you're needing that credential um, and that training to help you navigate into that next phase of your career. 
the master in management, think about it more of a launch pad. <clears throat> so you do this at a time where you're still maybe trying to figure things out a little bit. You want to be able to differentiate yourself. You've perhaps, you've, in our case, already studied business at the undergraduate level. So doing an MBA that early in your career isn't really going to help you differentiate. It's kind of going to be more of the same. <coughs> and so for us, um, we see students doing the MIB um, as a way to really get out there and start their career, not sort of come back to school as a way to now pivot into something else. Um, and so that's where we see the difference. I think age and stage is probably the biggest differentiator. As I noted earlier as well, our curriculums are very different. So our MBA curriculum, you will do courses in everything from introduction to finance, introduction to financial accounting, marketing, et cetera. Our assumption in MIB is that you already have all of that knowledge. And so our courses are more around leadership and global strategy and understanding the global business economy or business economies, um, you know, uh, global operations. So it has a much more specific focus, um, even though it still is relatively broad than the MBA who by design is very broad um, because students often don't come from a business background in most cases. Hopefully that answers your question. <clears throat> yeah, so another great question, are there scholarships available? So we do have a number of merit-based scholarships um, available. I would say they probably max out um, at around 10% of the overall fees. Now that being said, we do have a couple of endowed scholarships or specific scholarships for students from our indigenous and black communities. So those are highlighted on our website. You, um, those ones do require us another application and the application advisor will um, provide insight into how to go about doing that. All of our other merit-based scholarships um, you're evaluated for those at the time of admission. So you don't have to apply separately for those. Um, so yeah, they range from about $2,500 to $5,000, depending on whether you are in a single or double degree track. Um, they're based on your prior academic experience, um, reference information, interview, et cetera. So another great question, if I don't have a GMAT, um, I think I'm interpreting this. If you don't have a GMAT, is your application not assessed in the same way? And the answer to that is most of our students apply without a GMAT. And it's really a matter of engaging with your application advisor to understand if one will be required. So I wouldn't say that one gets prioritized over the other because that assessment is made during that preliminary phase where we look at your transcript and we look at your resume um, and determine at that point whether or not a GMAT would be required to move to the next phase. But it's not like if you apply with a GMAT, you automatically get moved to the next phase because that's not the case. Um, <clears throat> the GMAT and the academic performance are one element of how your application is assessed overall. Yeah, so another great question. So if a student did the GDB and then the MIB, do they typically start the MIB right away or do they take a gap? And we've seen both, to be honest. So we have a student in the program this year who just finished her GDB in August and moved directly into MIB. We have another young woman who completed the GDB last summer um, and then worked for this year with an intention of joining this fall. So and she jo joined us um, just this a few weeks ago. And so um, we see students doing both. And sometimes it's a financial reason. Sometimes it's they're still a bit undecided whether or not MIB or MBA could be the better route for them. Um, and we've had a combination of students choosing either of those options. And so um, it really is a matter of a discussion with current students, with, you know, an advisor, with, um, you know, perhaps program administration to determine what might be the best option for you.
Yeah, great question. Can the GMAT, GRE be taken instead of the GMAT? And yes, the answer to that is yes. Um, we do accept the, both the GMAT and the GRE, and there really is no preference. We do have a minimum score for both. I think it's GMAT is 600 and the GRE is a combined score of 315 or greater. Um, but that you can hide, you can find that on our website. Um, but again, engage with our admissions team just to make sure that that is in fact something that you need to, to factor into your planning. All right, great questions, everyone. Thank you so much for your engagement. Um, as I noted, I'm hoping we were able to paint a bit of a picture. It is a complex program, and I feel like that's one of its unique features. So certainly engaging with us for a more one-on-one -on -one conversation, engaging with our student ambassadors who are all highlighted on our website is another great resource, um, and really navigating and trying to get a sense of some of the stories and some of the pathways that our alumni have done as they've engaged the program or gone through the program. So we really look forward to hearing from you. Um, <clears throat> please engage with us. As I noted, you will be in receipt of this recording as well as some contact details and insights as to next steps. So I, uh, I thank you again for your time and attention and uh, take care everyone. Thanks so much.